That girl is hilarious. Have a look how beautiful it is out here today. Absolutely stunning day and yet for the last two days in Melbourne it was the most tripe weather. It was like it was the middle of winter. Freezing cold, raining, no one rode their bike. Guess who is in town? Robbie Arnold's in town. He's uh, down here for a couple of meetings. So I'm going to go meet up with him for breakfast. We're going to hang out, talk a bit of Chang, probably reminisce a little bit about the tour. And, uh, and I'm not going to eat anything. I'm going to have a juice. So I eat far too much. I, I am about 20 coffees in. <laughs> and we're still here. I'm just chewing their ears off. Yeah. We're just getting real intense. We're at Hot Honey, which is in Ad uh, Albert Park. Good cafe. I just had some breakfast. You guys remember this guy? Just there you go. Mouthful of chickpeas. I'm back. Getting the camera poked in my face. I oh, know. And this is Luke. Good morning. So he's a reigning Team Pursuit World Champion. He did the qualifying in in London earlier this year. Yep. Uh, didn't do the final. Stood on the podium. Got a rainbow jersey. And then uh, a couple of months later, realised he wasn't going to Rio, so he was working for Ride Cycling. Yeah. 2012 uh, NRS winner. Did ya? And um, it's amazing. 2000. I'm pretty proud of that, are ya? <laughs> 2014 um, stage for BMC Racing for a couple of months. That's great. You raced for BMC. Yeah. So uh, 2014 we had the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. And we beat we go there, which was pretty satisfying. Yeah, cool. Um, and then after that, um, Stage Youth BMC, so that was an awesome experience. It's pretty cool to race with the likes of Paul Hushoff in his last few races. So How good would that be? Yeah, the atmosphere was just surreal. So Yeah. What are you doing at Rob's magazine? Uh, so at the moment, helping Rob with the marketing and advertising, so it's been really fun. It's been a good journey so far. He hasn't, he hasn't cracked you yet? Nah. Did he tell you we had a big fight at the uh, <laughs> <laughs> what we, at the second day? Didn't we? We had a, The second day we had a big stash. No, no, it was just an incident and we had to overcome it, but we managed. And we, we, we said we'd talk about it, so we did talk about it and we overcame it, didn't we? We overcame it like in like 10 minutes, I think. We were hugging uh, it out. Yeah, it was a bit awkward for a little while. Oh, yeah. But we got there. Yeah, but if you there. travel with anyone for three weeks, mate, if I tra if I travel with my mum, I'd fight with her. Yeah. Do you know? Raise it and move on. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. that's the future. If you've got a problem, solve it. Yeah. It's really easy. We Isn't had a good time, though, didn't we? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was pretty good. Are we going back? I reckon we probably should. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you saw, but I sent you a message last night where uh, Louis, my son, had, had become a thousandth viewer of one of your vlogs and he was just... Was and he? Then he? And then he went and looked at the highlights of the tour and he found the one of me bashing you on the head with the air guitar. Yeah. Or the, the, the blow-up guitar. And he was like, what are you doing to Mark? And that was on the tourmalay, but there was, it just looked like it was a violent act. So really? I had to let him know it was okay. I wasn't really hurt. <laughs> So I don't know if you guys saw the interview that Rob, it was Jörg Yaksch, wasn't it? Jörg, Jörg, yeah. One of the reasons that he gets in the media is that he talks about doping and he talks about it in a way that is so open and honest yeah. that it's quite confronting for some people, particularly people who are involved in cycling, yeah. who have had an involvement in doping, yeah. or, or whatever, or just the very fact that doping is so pivotal part of cycling. Yeah. And um, it's, it's pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. But Jürgen just faces it, and if I ask him a question about what it was like to use EPO, he'll tell me. If I ask him a question about the effect of cortisone, he'll tell me. Yep. And I think that ma makes him an engaging character. If you haven't seen the video, it's well worth watching. So the start of the Giro was in Sardinia, and we were sitting Tyler, Hamilton and me were sitting in, the, because it was also riding for Tinkoff at that time, we were sitting in the car and there was our sports director and Tinkoff. And Tinkoff was calling the UCI and it was just in the time where actually, you know, a year before Operacion Porto happened, then all the team managers, amongst them, most of them that I met, encouraged us to dope but the team manager said from a moral perspective because you're suspicious 
to have doped. You could have some blood bags with Fuentes. And I didn't confess at that time. They said, no, you're not allowed to write uh, because it's not okay. And um, which was total bullocks because most of them, like there were team directors voting against us that have been my team directors before and that said, can you not please do a little bit more EPO because 46, 48 is too little. So if you go above 50, that would be great. And so anyway, so there was this kind of decision of the team directors that no one who is suspicious should write. And um, so Tinkoff, and you have to say that Tinkoff at the end of the day, he's not a hypocrite, which was very good. He did not care. He said, are you allowed to write? And I said to him, yes, I'm allowed to write legally. And he said, okay, then you write for, and like he does, uh, okay, then you write for my team. Okay, so we were there and then because Tyler and me were on the team and I won a race before that, I think to the Lorraine or something, and Tyler was good and suddenly, you know, the team directors, they came up again and said to Tinkoff, no, you're not allowed to, you should not let them write. And Tinkoff said, like, I don't care. And then the pressure got too high because the, um, the RCS called Tinkoff and said, so the organizer of the Giro and said, hey, better don't let them ride. It's not good PR for if Tyler wins or Jörg wins a stage or whatever. It's a mess for us from a PR side. And so Tinkoff called the UCI and said, are my riders allowed to ride? And he almost insulted the, uh, the secretary of McQuaid. <laughs> <laughs> like like a typical you know Russian guy talking to a secretary you know and uh, then he's ah, I don't care I don't give a shit you just right anyway so um, he did a trial he brought 12 people to Sardinia and he said of these 12 people a day before the start of the Giro we do an individual time trial and of these 12 people nine do the Giro and he had this idea like what I never experienced like, who would do that, you know? Anyway, so we had this time trial, and then uh, I think Tyler won the time trial, and I was second with four seconds or five seconds behind him, and was all good. And in the meantime of this, like, half an hour time trial, he must have gotten some calls from the UCI, and where they explained to him that he should not let us ride. So after the time trial, we were getting out of the bus, and then uh, Tinkoff came, and so the Tyler and York, come here, come here. I was like, oh, what's up? So uh, performance was very good. I like, I like. Mm, okay, so I have good news and bad news for you. What do you want to hear first? <laughs> like, mm, good news? Okay, Tyler, you won time trial. Very good, you're very professional, I like. And York, you second, only like five seconds behind. But good performance, good performance. I like, you're professional. Mm, okay, what's the bad news? You don't ride, <laughs> and then like, how do? Why? Like, no, well, you don't ride. You're like, get out of my sight. Get out of my vision. I don't want to see you. And I'm like, okay. And then we didn't even know how to get home. Like, we were standing there, and Tinkoff actually just said to you, like, you can move out of the hotel. And then we had to organize our flights home, get somehow to the airport. It like, was really disgusting. Like, <laughs> And, but that's probably the Russian approach where you say, like, yeah, I need you, then you're okay, I don't need you. But he, he, it was uh, part of the game, it was a bit of fun. Yeah, for him it was fun. Yeah. If for him, no, no, it's like, it's like, for him it was fun. We were suffering, we were like, what should we do now? And then, yeah, well, we flew back to Luca, I think, or to Pisa. Anyway, so, um, yeah. And then I, I got this call, like two or three months later, I confessed and then I said that on every big team I've been on, there was organized doping and I got a call from Tinkoff. And uh, Tinkoff said, I used it, York, you say uh, that uh, there was doping on my team? And I said, no, no, Oleg, I said on every big team. <laughs> and he felt so insulted, like he was every, every English, swear word he knew he would like put it in 30 seconds and <laughs> I mean telephone here and um, yeah that was think of but he's still you know like I kind of like him because he's 
different and he's probably less hypocritical than the rest of the team managers. Mm. But um, yeah, they won't see him probably for a long time in cycling. Is that a shame or uh, what, what do you make of his influence on the peloton? If you, if you break it down, he was good in the sense that he actually said we should restructure the whole business model. This was very important and um, and this is the main issue uh, because the whole business concept is not, not sustainable. Like if, there, if a sponsor drops out, you're done. If you have Bayern Munich or Barcelona, if the sponsor drops out, they don't actually care. Mm. You know, they would also play a season without a sponsor because they generate so much TV revenues mm. and that's one of the issues why the system doesn't work. And um, and uh, he's also right. For example, with you know, he was putting the finger in the wound when he said about Waters and all these guys. He said they are always great. They have great ideas over a bottle of wine, and then that's pretty much it. Like they, everyone is frightened to lose the sponsor. Everyone is frightened to protest against the ASO. And I think if he would have found five, six, seven, eight people more that would not ride the tour, you know, and that would have the balls to stay at home and say, okay, we stay at home, then ride with a third division French team, if that makes the tour more interesting, then do it. Then they could have changed the whole business model, but currently the ASO is putting all the money in their pocket. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that interview, guys. I am walking back to the hotel with the boys. How long are you here for? Go back tonight. Do you? Yeah. One night. Mate, you're leaving this perfect weather to go back to Tripe, Sydney. Terrible Sydney. Good to see you, man. Yeah, likewise. It's been a while. Singapore was last time. I know. I know. Feels like, feels like, year? feels no, like three years ago. Yeah. Will you ever race again? Like, you're working with Rob. Yeah. Would you, do you think you'll ever race? Unlikely. I think probably just, uh, Enjoy the event scene and, and try and just get back on the bike for the right reasons because I enjoy riding. Um, yeah. I don't know if racing is really a goal of mine to sink 500 k's a week into training for a club race. I don't think that's something that's on the radar at the moment. But who knows? I think at this point, just trying to enjoy it and really wrap my head around the other aspects of cycling.